Adobe has recently updated Lightroom Classic with some new and very powerful AI-based masking tools. In this video, I'm gonna walk through those updates. I'm also gonna give you some tips and tricks on how you can make them even more powerful. My name is Pai, and I'm one of the founders of Lynn and Jersa Photography and SLRLounge.com. We're teaming up with Adorama to bring you a new series of photography tutorials called Master Your Craft right here on Adorama TV. So let's dive in. Hello, my friends. My name is Pai. Welcome to Adorama TV. You know how I like to do? Get straight into things. So look, I want you to jump into Lightroom Classic. You're going to load up any image you like. I'd recommend an image that has a subject as well as maybe a sky and kind of foreground, something like the image that you have here. Normally, I'd give you guys the exercise files, but this client is an actual client of Lynn and Jersa Photography, and they were cool enough to let me use the image, but they do want to remain private. So we're not going to zoom in. We're just going to work from here. So with an image loaded, what I'd like you to do is just apply any basic look first before we get into the actual tools themselves. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the visual flow preset, uh, the modern pack, and I'm going to choose HDR natural. I'm going to go ahead and adjust the exposure up as well, kind of for my subject skin tones. And we get to right here. Okay, again, you can use any presets you've made yourself, you can, you know, do whatever look you'd like manually or whatever presets you've purchased, doesn't matter. Just get to a look first. So once we're here, this is where we would typically start doing some local adjustments, right? We kind of start doing some burning and try to select and maybe mask our subjects and whatever we want to do, but we're doing it by hand. So look, what's new is if you go to the top right now, and this is with our latest update essentially. So if I check, in fact, I will check just to give you guys a version number. Uh, this version of Lightroom is Lightroom 11.0, okay? So as of 11.0 in Lightroom Classic, we have these features. So if I go to masking, you'll notice the menu has changed a bit. It's the same tools. Well, there are some new ones, but they're now kind of organized a bit different. When I click on that mask, you'll see add new mask, select subject. This is an AI-based masking feature and select sky as is also an AI based feature. These are the two big new ones. Then like always, we have the brush, the linear gradient, the radial gradient, but they've also broken out color range, luminance range, and depth range where it can essentially be detected as new selection options as well. Previously, these were basically inside of the brushes and the gradients. That's great and all, but how exactly does this work? Well, step one, I want to show you guys the new AI based features and you may have seen these, but I'm going to show you a way of using them that you might not be thinking. So what we're going to do is first select subject. Okay. Now what you'll see is Lightroom is going to go and detect the subject. And once it has it, it's going to show this mask. I have it actually showing this black and white mask. So how do you do this? See this little check mark right here? If you click show overlay, it's gonna show the actual overlay. If you click the three dots, you can choose what kind of overlay you'd like. I believe the default is red. You can actually control opacity. The opacity comes somewhere down here. But if you're using a color, I like to turn it way up. What I also like to do is kind of just not use the color. And instead, I like the white on black. So what we know in a mask is that white reveals and black conceals, right? And the AI did a really good job of actually selecting our subject. I'm going to turn off this overlay. Now, this would be great if I actually wanted to make adjustments on the subjects themselves, right? So let's say that I do make an adjustment on the subjects. I'm going to brighten them up just a bit more, maybe add a little bit more shadow recovery, a little more, you know, black recovery and kind of leave it like maybe right about here, actually. Well, what if I just wanted to select the entire image, everything that's not the subjects? Well, again, this is where these new tools are very powerful because we actually have a masking layer menu, which is what you're seeing now. So if I click plus, I can go select subject again. Now it adds that same selection to a new layer. So it's going to run the AI again. I could just duplicate, but I'm going to do a new one. What I'm going to do this go around is on this first primary object. So we've selected the subject right on this little sub layer. We're going to go to the three dots and we're going to select invert. You can also click on that sub layer and press, I believe it's apostrophe to invert. Now remember white conceals, uh, sorry, white reveals black conceals, right? So now we're basically affecting everything but the subjects. 
in essence, what we've just done is we've selected the entire background minus our subjects. So now look at this. I can actually control and bring the background right back to where it's vivid and popping, right? Okay, let's take this another step further. So let's create a new mask. This time we're gonna go select sky. Again, using the AI piece to select sky, Lightroom is gonna come up with its guess on what we're trying to do. Well, what if I wanna refine that guess a bit? Notice how a little bit of the selection does fall into kind of down here in the, in the I guess the horizon line and the dunes. Um, and we also have a little bit of the sky where we get some posterization, right? What I can do now if I wanna modify is click add. So if I press add, I can use any of these options. I'm gonna select the brush and I'm gonna paint additional white over those areas where there's a little bit of posterization, okay? And I, what I would recommend when you're doing this, by the way, is when you're painting that in, do leave on the, uh, I'll show you, the auto mask option. So it'll kind of detect what you're trying to do and make it a little bit more accurate, especially when it gets to these edges. Okay, that's great. Now, what if I want a minus? Well, the same way, I'd go to subtract, and this time I'm gonna select brush, and now I'm gonna just minus out my subjects that I don't want in that selection at all, okay? Now we're good. I'm gonna turn off this overlay, and now what we've selected is just the, back, uh, the background sky, okay? From here, I'm gonna flip this down to a preset. So this is from the Visual Flow Retouching Toolkit, and again, if you're not using it, all you're gonna do is dial in the settings. So look, this is the Sky and Cloud Enhancer, and you can basically just apply it, and then what I'm gonna do is drag down on exposure a little bit more, right? So we get a little more detail, more contrast, more, you know, it just boosts the sky tones. If we wanted to, we could also shift temperature. So look at this. I can warm it up, I can cool it down, but I can shift the color as well. So let's say for this image, I wanna get a tiny bit more blue into the sky. So I'm actually gonna minus out on the temperature and add a little bit of magenta just to get a little more blues back into it. Cool. Now, what if I wanted to select just the ground? So again, this is another advanced masking tip. What we're gonna do here, press create new mask, select sky again, but this time, if you guessed it, we're gonna actually invert the sky selection. So previously we inverted the selection of the subject, right? So now we're gonna select that sky layer, press apostrophe, and now it's gonna invert. Once again, we can add to the mask or subtract from the mask. Now let's say that I wanna subtract my subject from the mask. I could paint them out, that works, but watch this. I could go subtract and then just choose select subject. Now on that ground selection, it goes, detects the subjects, and then does a pretty good job of minusing them out. If I wanted to refine that a little bit, I could add the brush, I could zoom in and kind of just paint in a little bit more, okay? But for the most part, the adjustment that we're gonna make um, is not gonna require us to go in that tight. Since we're not gonna make too dramatic of a change, this selection is good. Let's go ahead and turn off the overlay. Also, if you start making adjustments over here, the overlay disappears anyway, okay? So you can do either or. So with that sky, the ground, so now if we wanted to be accurate, we'd rename it, right? But with the ground selected, I'm gonna turn off the show overlay, we're gonna to go to exposure, and I'm gonna pull this down. I'm gonna lower a little bit of the contrast, raise a little bit of the blacks, kind of just to get the contrast level to blend in with our subjects. Now again, I can go and refine this to the nth degree. If I wanted to deliver and print this thing, I'm gonna go in and paint on those masks a little bit. But it's so cool what Lightroom just did for us, because look at the before versus the after in terms of this masking selection. Okay, so that's the before and this is the after. And we're doing all of this layering and everything inside of Lightroom now, which is absolutely insane. It makes Lightroom so much more powerful. This is, in my opinion, one of the best updates to Lightroom that I've honestly seen in probably the last 10 years. It's fantastic. And you can see where Adobe is going with these changes. I'm sure there's gonna be additional options probably on like sky replacements and other things that we can potentially do to our image. But even this is fantastic. That's it for me. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, I'd love for you to comment below. Comment also if you have a question. See, we're just scratching the surface with these new tools. I have all these additional tips and tricks 
including using color range and luminance range and depth range masking. But I wanted to get into the basics in this first video. So if you want more, let me know. I'll create more videos on this topic and uh, we'll do some more editing inside of Lightroom Classic. In the meantime, we'd love for you to subscribe to the Adorama TV channel. It's weird that I ask. Maybe it's not weird. You know, some of you guys don't know. Or maybe you don't know that you can turn on the notification button to be notified when new videos go up, which is pretty much every day. But in the meantime, I will see you guys back here same time, same place next week. I appreciate you all. If you want to give me a follow, you can follow me at Pygersa, and I'll see you. Bye.